Cuando estoy... When I'm in the water, I enter a new world. It's a great privilege being able to observe things that so few other people can. Seeing and understanding how nature works underwater is spectacular. It's an indescribable sensation. Spectacular, it's a sensation indescriptible. This is where the Pacific Ocean meets a seemingly endless desert. Peru's coastal region is among the driest in the world, while its cold ocean waters are among the most productive ecosystems. The current that flows along the western coast of South America would later be named after Alexander von Humboldt, although it was known centuries before his expedition to the region. In the course of his climate studies, Humboldt noticed that at the coast of Peru, the Pacific was around 7 degrees Celsius colder than in the open ocean. As the cool masses of water flow up from the Antarctic and north along South America, they bring large quantities of oxygen with them. One of the most important features of the cold currents is that they generate an extremely rich ecosystem in the region. Here we find extraordinarily high concentrations of marine life that are typical for these waters. Compared with other latitudes, these waters boast a far higher degree of biodiversity, which makes them very important. Ruslan Pastor works for Peru's Imarpe Marine Institute. Here in the Paracas National Reserve, he examines the influence of the Humboldt current on plant and animal life. Divers need to don thick wetsuits to go exploring underwater here. And his work is not made easier by the strong current. The upwelling zones in the Humboldt current bring an abundance of nutrients to the surface in the process supplying food for fish and marine mammals. The current is an ideal environment for algae. The majority of the algae growing in this region has adapted extremely well to the cold environment. Today, algae constitute a very important component of the overall biological cycle. A lot of organisms feed off of them. So where you find a healthy algae population, you also find a high diversity of other species. That biodiversity in and along the Humboldt current has made Peru's coastal waters one of the world's richest sources of fish. For centuries, the country offered hugely lucrative grounds for fishers. But more recently, they've noticed a significant reduction in their catches. And it's the operators of smaller fishing boats, like Captain Mario de Jesus Paiva, who are struggling the most. Just look. We've been out here for over two hours, and we haven't caught a single fish. There used to be so much more to catch in this region until the big boats arrived. They kill all the smaller species of fish with their trawler nets. There's nothing left for us here, so we have to go further out to sea. Peru's annual fishing haul amounts to 7 million tons. That's over 10% of the global catch. Overfishing by high-tech commercial fleets from all over the world is a threat to the ecosystem, and it's already making an impact on people's livelihoods. 
in the once prosperous port city of Paita. Many boats have been left stranded by developments. With unemployment rising, one of the few options for making a living is a job on one of the foreign trawlers. How much longer can local fishermen survive? In the Peruvian capital, Lima, the country's National Marine Institute is projecting the future development of the ecosystem in the Humboldt current. In addition to keeping count of fish stocks, the scientists here also monitor the quality of the seawater and how it has been declining due to climate change. Among their observations, the Humboldt current now contains less oxygen and is becoming increasingly acidified due to high levels of carbon dioxide. One object of their research is only visible under the microscope. A drop of water can contain up to a thousand plankton organisms seen here during the metamorphosis of larvae into juveniles. Plankton provides food for many marine creatures and is indispensable for the well-being of the seas. Plankton is made up of organisms that benefit production and propagation in other food chains, and it's also very sensitive to change. As a result of the low oxygen content, the acidification of the seas, and the growing pollution of our coasts, organisms that are unable to adapt quickly enough end up dying. And we're seeing this right now with plankton. It's a picture far removed from the paradise of biodiversity that Alexander von Humboldt encountered on the Peruvian coast. How much more human intervention can our seas cope with? The future is definitely in our hands. It ought to be obvious to us humans as intelligent beings that if we want to have a flourishing ecosystem, it's up to us to start keeping it healthy. A lot of people still don't seem to realize that the contamination we subject our coasts and oceans to is being further accelerated by climate change. But we still hope to be able to reverse it. Peru's ecosystems are extremely diverse and dynamic. So maybe we will manage to see nature recuperate, despite all the interference, and adapt to those changes.